Yo, Elliot. I right, got a question from our buddy Steven. He's doing incline bench presses and he's finding that he only feels it in his shoulders. He doesn't feel it in his chest. So his shoulders are getting real sore. They're getting activated, but he can't seem to get his chest to be activated. He doesn't feel anything in his chest. He's wondering what the hell he should go on is going on. How could he activate the chest muscle? So the advice that I'm going to give you can be used with regard to any reciprocal inhibition. Right? And that term reciprocal inhibition basically means where you've got two muscles that should be working together. Right? But one of them has decided, the nervous system has decided is more important. Right? And stimulates it to the absence of another muscle. I mean this happens all over our bodies, in the shoulders, uh, in relation to the front and back, it happens in our hips, it happens all over. Where basically you get these muscles that become very hypertonic and they disallow the nervous system to drive energy into a, another muscle that's associated with the movement. Hence the term reciprocal inhibition, right? One is overworking in relation to the other. So what you've got to do, specifically for you, but anybody who's experiencing this type of problem, you know, you, you get the situation where the biceps work all the time when you're doing rows and you can't get the back to work. What you've got to do is you've got to stretch the muscle that is very hyperactive before you go into your exercise. So if you're trying to stimulate the chest, you want your chest muscles to get more of a pump, right? And, uh, and you feel the shoulders are overacting. You want to stretch those muscles in particular. So the pec minor, a pec minor stretch, and even a stretch where your hands up against the wall and you turn this way, you know, and even if you turn under and turn this way, any type of stretch for the anterior part of your shoulder, right? Experiment, try different ones, different stretches for the anterior part of your shoulder, anterior compartment. Stretch it completely, right? This is very important. Stretch it, get a really good stretch, and then go and find an exercise that you know isolates the chest, right? A really good chest isolation exercise are like flies, right? And, and there's ways to move your hands. I'm not, I don't know exactly how. If you ask some other bodybuilders, they'll tell you. I'm not into like stimulating body parts to any great degree. What I try to do is rehab patterns and a push pattern in that eliminates the chest is not a healthy push pattern, right? So what you wanna be able to do is stimulate the chest. And I think if you do flies with a sort of a supinated grip, like your palms up somewhat, you're gonna get the chest to work a lot more in absence of the supporting muscles, in the absence of the shoulders and all the other muscles that might decide to chime in. So what you just did, let me backtrack for a moment, what you just did is you shut off the hyperactive muscle and you're using a specific isolation exercise to stimulate the one that doesn't want to work. So this is a therapeutic approach to bodybuilding. After doing that, you might be able to, I mean, it might be so fresh that you could then just go right into your incline bench press and you find that it carries over, right? This remains deadened and this remains stimulated. You go do your incline press and you're like, oh shit, it, I'm getting it now, right? Because what you're doing is you're, you're taking the nervous system and you're saying, leave this alone, ah, 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 right? That's what stretching does, it shuts muscles down. And you're telling it, turn this on, turn this on, turn this on. Another trick, if you're a trainer or if you have a training partner is while you're doing the incline press, get your friend to take his fingers just like this and tap your chest muscles. Just go like that, right? S muscle is stimulated by touch, right? If you touch the muscle, it, turn, it, it, it turns on. So as you're doing the exercise, have your friend tap you. Tap you, turn on, turn on, turn on, turn on. When I train people who have really weak glutes and I have them do hip extension exercises, I'm taking my fingers and I'm jabbing it into the side of their hip right where their glute would be, right? So that's it. You've got to shut down those hyperactive muscles. You've got to stimulate those phasic muscles so that you can then integrate it. Very important now to integrate it back into a full push pattern. You know, however you created this faulty recruitment pattern, um, you know, it, it could be just merely lifestyle. You're carrying a book bag all the time when you were a kid. It could be anything. But what you want to do is stay away from anything that created that imbalance and then do as I say and bring that, uh, that pattern back up into balance. So that, I hope that helps, dude. Good luck. Yo, Elliot.